Hey guys, welcome back to our continuing coverage here at the CE Week. Line um, show. Exactly. I'm Callie Lewis. I'm John P. This is day two. McGadgety goodness. I like that term. Yeah, I know. That's <laughs> kind of two terms, actually, to be honest. What do you mean? Gadgety and goodness. All right. I'm being handed stuff. Oh, we can do that later. <laughs> All right. But first, Look. we've got a, well, second of the day. Yeah. We've got a Chris, Chris and, and Aaron. Aaron. That's right. Welcome, Welcome to the show. Welcome, guys. From Parasite. That's right. You got it's it. Not like Parasite. It's Tell me like what Parasite pair means. Pair of sight. Yeah, pairing sight. So uh, kind of the idea. You can go ahead and talk about it. it we started idea, about two so. and a half years ago. Okay. And uh, you know, I had this thought come to me about what would it be like to listen to somebody talk or do a speech or whatever if you were seeing through their eyes and watching where they're looking and seeing their hand movements and so on. And kind of that was the beginning of the process is back in 2010. And we collected a team of people together and started developing this device. And it was pretty ironic, it was October 3rd when the idea first came to me and October 12th, 2010, they released information about the OMAP 4460. We were able to get involved with TI and using that chip early on and we've been developing it for two and a half years. And we're doing a kind of a business to business play with the device because established verticals could see a cost efficiency of this instantly by using, utilizing the device to help spread their talent base further across a group of people that work with them. Absolutely. And what we brought here today is a, is a breakout of the actual device. This plexiglass container here is, is um, kind of just has the, the guts of the glasses, if you will, broken out, starting yeah. over here at the battery moves over to the first um, 1080p 5 megapixel camera, the second one here, and as you move over to the main board and the system on module, where you see the TI 4460 chip, uh, it's, an, it's an eight layer board, that's probably one of the most impressive things our team was able to come up with in terms of packaging size. Mm -hmm. uh, we went out and looked at different SOMs. We, the, the closest, smallest thing we could find was about four times the size. So we realized in order to make it aesthetically pleasing in glass form, we needed to make it a lot smaller. Um, and so we made our own. His idea was, and it was uh, quite a process, but we were yeah. able to do it and, and get it to a point where it was something like this, which even though this is a, is a prototype in itself and we expect to get it even thinner and lighter, something that is acceptable on your head. Um, so you, let's just let's just make sure that everyone's clear. This is you guys are very um, early in development. I would say yeah. Um, so this is a prototype, and the future will be definitely different than what we're seeing here. But yes. the first thing that I think people are thinking yeah. is is this a Google Glass competitor? Yeah, sure, sure. And I'm gonna put it on if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah it right might in. be a little. It's not spring loaded. It might be a little bit That's tight right. on your head. But let's see. You let's see how no, it looks have, on camera. Most yeah, everything is big head. Is I big have a on big head. head. So. I have small, tiny <laughs> little head. Very funky. There you go. You look like a fashion model. That's true. Well, you actually, she is. Last, so right? I mean, yeah. that makes sense, right? Um, so, is it a Google Glass competitor? You know, I, I am happy to say I get that question often <laughs> enough that I can answer it. Um, you know, the biggest, the first differentiator is the business-to-business -business approach. I mean, certainly Google is going after a consumer base. Um, we feel as though this product is a great first step to help businesses achieve diagnostics, troubleshooting, things of that nature. Um, to give you an example, just a quick example, there's a company that's working with us, a development partner. We actually have 36 of them. And what they are is they're companies that are working with us to flesh out these use cases, to see what works, what doesn't, um, understand exactly the capabilities of the product. It's really like you would use a focus group and consumer. We're using the same thing, but yep. kind of with companies. And one of the companies we're working with, they're looking at, they sell medical devices, so MRIs, CTs, things like that. They sell them all over the world. Um, they're looking at adding this to each sale uh, as a consumer, a customer service piece, right? So instead of us flying an engineer from Michigan to Israel to fix your MRI, we're going to sell these with every device. Huh. You put these on, and the person back in Michigan can see what you see, hear what you hear, and talk with you about Remotely it. Remotely direct device. you to do what you need to be and doing. And it's all live, okay. right? So we have two, two 1080p, five megapixel cameras. Yeah, you can so see do, that here. So, so do they, uh, would they be watching like in 3D essentially? Or? Well, what they're doing is they're transmitting their perspective. 
So uh, a qu I guess a quick and dirty way to explain it, if I were wearing these glasses here and Chris was in California, he could see what I was seeing, he could hear what I was hearing, and he could talk to me about it through the glasses. Yeah. So we have two-way communication. I'm just wondering why you need two of the 1080p cameras. That's a good question. So on our on our roadmap, we, we've got the 3D capability okay, yeah, on there. Yeah. That's uh, a big piece of it. That's what I was thinking. And then some of our development partners, they want to use the other camera for you know more on a modular approach, where they could drop in a thermal sensor or mm -hmm. drop in one of our development partners wants to be able to barcode scan. So you know these big, hefty barcode scanners you use in inventory spaces? If you could take glasses and That'd walk be up awesome. to it and say scan, and it scan. Yeah, you know, that would it's be hands free like, and Yeah, like if absolutely. you're handling lots and lots of packages, instead of being like hand scan, scan, you could just two-handed move it through your, as long as it moves through your field of vision, yeah. absolutely. you're just grabbing scan, those scan, things scan, scan. going. Or even in even the case like UPS or FedEx or something. Yeah. If you were able to deliver a package and there's a barcode at the facility that you deliver that you look at, yeah. you look at the package, you leave it, no signature necessary, there's your proof, and you could documented. And you could even snap a picture of the person who received the package yeah. like right. when they're yeah. doing it, and you don't have to sign, you know? Absolutely, something absolutely. Like that. One of the other big differentiators, as you can see, and we expect this to be leaner and, and less less heavy sure. but very very robust yeah we want this thing and it's going to be in industrial spaces and b2b spaces it should be able to be dropped stomped on thrown around and still work every time yeah. you know that's the goal of, of building a device this robust so it's gonna it's actually gonna have um like one of the chips is a wi-fi chip or that's right. something like that we have wi-fi wi and bluetooth enabled okay, okay. Um, i'll actually show you here my uh, our app our phone app which you know, this phone app. I think the best the best way to explain it is, is that it's a remote control for the device. So the fact that we don't have a screen on the device, this phone app allows us to control the device. So everything that's happening here, everything we're telling the the glasses to do is happening on the glasses because it's a full computer. So we can tell the glasses to record locally, to stream. When I do stream, it's going to send it a URL to whoever I want to see my stream. Cool. Okay. Right. And then I can also I can pull it down to my phone to edit and send. And then the settings allow me to change from 1080p, which is our, of course our best, down to 720 and to 480. The reason for that would be um, connectivity is both Wi-Fi and cell enabled. So at, when we're in this building, of course, we have great Wi-Fi. Yeah. We can use it. We walk outside. The device is it's going to notice we don't have Wi-Fi anymore. Yeah. It's going to start pulling from the cell towers. Okay. I could see, so. uh, we're so. about out of time, but I could see also some really cool uses for this in like news gathering and stuff, you know, if you if you could put 20 pairs of these on people and just send them somewhere, sure. right. you don't need all those cameras if these things can be broadcasting back to a central location and switching and stuff, it'd be very yeah. cool. It's Absolutely. full 1080p, so why not, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Or even inside of a stadium during a game, if yeah. you've got 50 people all over different seats wearing these, and they had open channels where you could go see what they see when they're on a one yard line yeah. or whatever, it'd be a pretty cool look. Yeah. So. I think our biggest message, if I could, before we wrap up, is when we're looking for more development partners. We're looking for businesses that say, you know, we like to utilize this technology for free, but in return, we'll give you feedback on price points, on things that work, things that don't. You know, really work with us as a partner to develop this product. And that's really what yeah. we're here for, is what we're looking for. And gotcha. we've been lucky to meet some good companies at the show here good. that can that want to work with us. So, so what kind of time frame are you looking at in terms of? Well, we have an alpha release scheduled here in a few months, a beta at the end of the year, and we're excited expecting to have uh, a first production run in Q1 2014. Gotcha. So we're not too far out yeah. from a first production run and we have a lot of excited people that are that are uh, looking forward to this product as Very we are. Very cool. So. Well, well, we we're are too. We're looking forward to seeing yeah. the Absolutely. next iterations and getting our hands on it yeah. as well. So Absolutely. hopefully we'll uh, bring you guys more from Parasites. That's right. Thanks guys. <laughs> Appreciate it.